Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content. We're actually going to be featuring a rental team. This popped up on my timeline over on Twitter yesterday from a Japanese player who'd been using this in the previous format. Obviously the ladder has just up updated now, so we'll be going into a new phase of Series 8. But this is what they've been using in the previous season and had a lot of success with it. I love the elements from this team. I thought it would be a really good one for us to kick off with today. Obviously, all their socials will be down in the description if you want to give them a follow going forward. Um, yeah, we've got the, the Polytoad Kingdra, really good dominant combination here. You're kind of tending to see Kingdra and Kyogre more often in this format, but Polytoad provides that rain and the Theodrizzle ability there and nice options with the trapping ability of Gothitelle that we say a bit of a throwback from previous formats that we've had in, in later years. And then you've got Mineshower, which is just there to kind of support Taunt with the Faker, Close Combat and the U-Turn to give a pivot, as well as the Rillaboom, which helps out, especially with the rain mode, benefits from the rain, and then Zacian going to be your uh, restricted Pokemon Pokemon on this team. So we're featuring Zacian today. It's going to be really nice. Obviously, we featured Zamazenta in our previous episode. So we'll play a couple of games of the team. We'll talk through it. So here's the rental code for the team. And uh, without further ado, friends, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this kind of build. It would be great to hear your opinions. And uh, without further ado, we'll get into our first match of the day. Okay, so up first today we have a team of Ndidi Female, Alola Marowak, Cinderace, Kingdra, Togekiss and Kyogre. So we've got a little bit of a rain off here. Uh, we do have ways to kind of help out uh, our rain matchup. Obviously Rillaboom will help against things like Kyogre, but my opponents packed out their team with things that really help against uh, the Rillaboom. Obviously the Togekiss, Cinderace, uh, the Alola Marowak as well, all do pretty well against uh, Rillaboom. So we have to kind of be a little bit careful around how we utilize in the team here um i think a good way to potentially go forward is maybe go kingdra up top kingdra is always going to be a good lead here because um with the rain in the back potentially for ourselves it could help us out a bunch but it's it's what we bring to kind of um i mean we can trap we could trap as well we could trap. There's not much speed control my opponent's team aside from airstream. So if we can kind of keep up with the airstreams, that's, that's always very, uh, very useful option. I think Polytoad in the back and then maybe we go, uh, uh, do we go Polytoad? Um, I don't know if I'm going to go Gothitelle actually. I think I might go Polytoad, Rillaboom and Zacian. I think that might be the best route for us because although my opponent might um set the rain up for us i think it's better you know the fact is that we've got the rain to support a kingdra straight away um and also if they go max wormwind into kingdra with their kingdra we've got a really good switch into zacian so it's just if we see kyoga kingdra from my opponent it makes things a little bit more difficult for us but we don't see that we're going to see the uh the indeedy and the cinderace here so this is actually all right. We don't necessarily need to max here either because we got the rain up. We could just go for a potential muddy water because that then gets around the uh, the redirection. The problem would be is the Indeedy going uh, for an expanding force, which wouldn't be ideal. So one of the options we could potentially go for here would be um, go for that. Oh, we don't have muddy water. Okay, so that was one of the options that they didn't, didn't want. Um, now, do we max an airstream? It might be better going for that and getting the speed jump straight away and then getting boom onto the field. Hmm. Or do we just stick with with um with Polytoad here? It's just I don't really want to take an expanding force and whatever they uh yeah, I think especially if it's not G Max Cinderace, it might be a better idea to pull the rain into the back so at least if we see the cinderace set the sun up then we'd be able to uh we'd be able to kind of overwrite that the next turn but we're not going to be seeing that because the kyoga makes this way into the field and it's going to eat an airstream it makes it very difficult for my opponent now because obviously they, they do have the redirection but we do have access to fake out and we put a lot of pressure onto that kyoga straight off the bat with the really boom switching which is always very nice and it's all about kind of keeping that pressure on my opponent here because obviously the mirror mirrors are always difficult um and you want to try and just 
take a little step and edge forward in the match as soon as you can and try and keep a hold of that and kind of keep the momentum going. So it's all about the positioning of your Pokemon because already we can see potentially next turn, uh, depending on the damage that we do here to the Indeedee, um, it could be in range to go down from a Grassy Glide. Um, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> but with the redirection, we can stop that with, you know, fake out here. The Kyogre is likely to switch out into something like Cinderace maybe the next turn. But it's also a very risky thing to do because if you do that, then um, obviously... Uh, there's always a chance that we could go for like a max wormwind or a max geyser here as well um mm. kind of trying to think what would be the best play best play for us would be probably max geyser they, i think max geyser and uh, no let's go for the max airstream again into the kyoga um Let's go Grassy Glide into the Kyogre as well. Let's try and double up into it. I think it might be a good... We might just see Follow Me. Yeah, we do. But the, 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 the Grassy Glide plus another Airstream would be useful. Kyogre probably goes for Ice Beam here. Yeah, that definitely puts the Ndidi in range now to go down to the Airstream. And we've got a good speed advantage now with Kingdra. You know, in the rain, we're plus two. So even if the rain goes away for whatever reason then at least um, we've got that as a benefit. And the fact is we've got our grassy terrain up as well. So we kind of win that terrain war, which is always useful. Blizzard coming out. Um, we do have the double avoid and that's always a bit unfortunate for my opponent, but it's always the risky kind of run with those low accuracy moves, especially the spread ones where they've got the opportunity to kind of miss both targets instead of hitting. So a little bit unfortunate for my opponent as the Togekiss comes onto the field. Now... <sighs> we probably hmm yeah we're in a little bit of a, a tricky tricky position because you got, you've also you've obviously got the the redirection again which is a little tricky so we kind of want to try and get zassian onto the field if we can i think it might be better going for the uh did we go for a u-turn grassy glide they have to go for redirection here um it's just whether or not we want to keep boom on the field that's the thing. Like Rillaboom's like super important to us. Um, whereas we could just go for a U-turn, maybe into the Kyogre, and then if they do redirect, then we get Boom off the field. Yeah. It's just not so sort of safe to switch in Zacian right now because the the issue is uh, if Zacian comes onto the field, we potentially take a full power water spout, which is not something that we really want to be doing, you know? Um do some nice damage to the Togekiss and uh, we'll get the U-turn off and we'll get Politoed back onto the field. Um, because really with Politoed as well, it kind of gives you an end game um, situation with the, the Perish song where you can whittle your opponent down to two Pokemon. Now, regardless if they max later in the game, as long as Politoed's got the ability to kind of um, press that Perish Song button with two Pokemon left, which will potentially in the position to do this next turn where we can Hurricane into the Kyogre and Scald into the, the Togekiss. We should be able to pick up the Knockout, or we could just double tap into the Togekiss slot. Um, because Cinderace is going to come in on that slot, and it's not really going to want to take the double up. I mean... <laughs> The, the, in hindsight we're really better going for the hurricane into the Kyogre just to get damage onto it um, and then scald into the Togekiss with Politoed which we, will be enough to take it out and uh, like I say if we see the Cinderace come in there like we're seeing now um, we're going to be able to probably pick up the knockout onto it with the scald in the rain so we're going to see a protect from the Kyogre um, is the Togekiss going to come uh Wait there, sorry. What am I saying? Is this if this picks up the knockout? That's that's ideal. That's what we want. Yeah. Okay. So that's perfect. And now all we need to do is click the perish song button and play around their Dynamax turns. Now you've got to imagine that the Kyogre is going to be the Pokemon that Dynamaxes, but without the Electric Train up with the Wackenberry on the Politoed, there's no way other than a potential flinch that's going to stop the Politoed getting the perish up, and that kind of locks the game for us. So that's the that's what I'm trying to uh, to kind of say to you all like you've got the the option there of of a really nice win con we'll go for the hydro pump into the togekiss we've got the speed advantage and we'll just click perish just to lock this one up because with the the pokemon that we've got remaining 
there's no way that we can't switch around or just stall out pe between protect with what we've got in the field, uh, which will allow us to um, to get the most out of this opportunity. So there's a Hydro Pump we do hit and the Togekiss going down and uh, Kyogre are going to be the last Pokemon standing. But again, we still got Rillaboom in the back to come in. So we don't even need to wait these three turns. If, if Kingdra drops here for whatever reason, um, and we're not seeing my opponent actually click that Dynamax button just yet, we might see the um, the forfeit come out this next turn just with the Perish song kind of locking things up for us here. We also have, like, we could just sit here with, with Kingdra as well and just chuck attacks out until um, we're kind of happy uh, for them just to go down and whatever we've got in the back to come in, you know. We don't need to take any, any risks at all at this point. We've got it locked up. If these two go down here, then, you know, it doesn't matter to us because we've still got two Pokemon in the back. Grassy Terrain going away and uh, we can just chuck out i think just some draco meteors now with the uh, the fairy redirection off the field we're pretty safe to just launch that and um see if we can pick up a cheeky scald along the way with polytoad because we're just wasting time now unless we see the forfeit which i, I think we might do i oh, know we're not my opponent's playing it out so fair enough to them um as we get the draco on to the Kyogre, doing some fat damage. It does so much damage with the Life Orb, doesn't it? It's such a great attack. Uh, it really is. And um, we'll see the Thunder coming out now, but uh, it is going to just activate that Wackenberry that we do have on the Politoed, obviously reducing the damage there, which is always very useful, especially in a format where you've got quite a lot of electric type users and uh, we don't have any redirection uh, like Lightning Rod or anything like that on the team, which could kind of help with that. And we do get the burn as well. So uh, everything that we're asking for in this game is uh, is kind of playing out, which is great. So the Kyogre likely to go down this next turn. We'll just help in hand and go for a Draco Meteor and it, uh, it should be enough to... Um, get the get the win get the w for us today so which is always good and i i do love helping hand on polytoad as well it is uh such a nice option um especially i think that just set in general just it's got such utility you know the helping hand the perish and um the scald it gives you so many options with how useful polytoad can be in there there we go Fair play to my opponent. You'd see a lot of people kind of forfeit in those situations, and you can see why. Uh, there's not a lot coming back, but you know, sometimes taking note, playing till the end, it's worth doing. You never know what's going to happen in a battle. But very good game to my opponent. A nice one for us to kick off with today, and we'll jump into our next game of the episode. Up next, we got Sammy playing a team of Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Garchomp, Kyogre, Tepecoco, and Metagross. Really cool looking team uh, for us to kind of go up against this next game. Uh, love seeing the Garchomp and the Metagross. Real throwbacks to previous formats and... Um, it's it's quite a nice looking team. You've got the Kyogre, which is going to be the kind of centerpiece of the team with uh, the the fake out support from the Incineroar, Intimidate there, the screen support from the Grimmsnarl, um, potentially. I'd say maybe some speed control from the Grim Snarl. It does get Scary Face. It does get Thunder Wave. So there are options there. The Tapu Koko, again, going to be something that can threaten us. Obviously, with its electric terrain as well. I'm um, going to have Electro Web. A lot of kind of utility moves to support and be threatening at the same time. So not something to kind of underestimate. Metagross, what are we going to see? Like Bulldoze from potentially something like the Garchomp. Um, I guess there's... Tapico will get Brutal Swing, I wouldn't have thought so, but maybe. Um, there is the option there, Metagross is going to be something that we need to kind of watch out for definitely in this match. Uh, so what are we going to do? I mean, we could lead Gothitelle, it gives us a nice opportunity. Problem is leading Goth is, I mean, we could go down a Perish Trap route here. The the thing that I would say is we're probably going to see Tapicoco come out, you know, uh, from my opponent. But we could go Politoed, Kingdra, and I think Zacian. We'll go for maybe more of a Perish Trap kind of... Um, no, we're not even going Perish. What are we leading with? Gothitelle, Gothitelle, Poly, Kingdra, and... No. Rillaboom, Poly. That's what we're leading with. So we're leaving the Gothitelle on the bench. But I think it makes more sense to bring the Rillaboom, is what I'm meaning. Really. It'd be nice to get the Perish song off first, but we'll see what my opponent goes for. Bringing the Metagross in. We need to get the Kingdra on the field as soon as possible, really. That's the that's the big thing here for us. We do have knockoff with Rillaboom, but if there is a weakness policy on the Metagross, obviously we will proc that straight away. The big thing for us to do is, I think, try and get uh, a, scald on, a scald burn onto the Metagross. That's going to be super useful if we can if we can kind of get that uh, as soon as possible. Now, 
it might be a good idea to get Zassian onto the field in all honesty. Um, because if we get the Zassian onto the field, it's likely that the Metagross, if it does attack, it goes for either a Steel Spike or a Max um, Hailstorm. Um, and if we do see a Max, it may not Max. But I don't see it going after the Politoed. Um, we are going to see that. It's not going to go for a Max Quake, which is kind of the, the big option. And it may, I mean, they might. They might boost the Special Defense here. Uh, just to kind of give them a bit more longevity against the Politoed uh, and potentially when Kingdra hits the field later on. But I think the big thing for us here to do is try and stall out um, these Dynamax turns with the, the Metagross. Because the screens are going to go... Ooh. Thunder Wave coming out. That's... Uh, that's not so good. That's not so good. So there's the... Um, yeah. That's the speed control. And it's going to make... Utilizing Zassian very difficult, really difficult. As we do see the Zassian kind of take that pretty well. Um, but we need a Scald Burn. Polly's quite good at that, but we're not going to get it this turn. This time around, we're not getting it. We are going to see um, the Grim Snarl go for the Thunder Wave again. It kind of ties it up, though. It ties it up from using the screen support, which is always useful. Uh, and I'm just thinking now, do we switch in Rillaboom now? Or do we just protect? I think we protect with Zassi in this turn. And then we go for another Scald. We just try and get those burns because that's the big thing. Like if we can prevent the Metagross from uh, boosting up. It is probably going to go for the Max Quake here. Which is not ideal because of the Special Defense boost. Obviously we kind of want to try and mitigate that. But at the same time we're not really going to be able to stop it any other way. Um, but we definitely don't want Zassian getting uh, paralyzed. That's the thing. I think. Oh, my steel spike. Okay, boosting the defenses. I prefer to see that all day long. All day long, honestly. Um, I know we haven't got the rain boost anymore, but if we can get the scald burn here, this is what we're kind of aiming for. Polly's just good at sitting in front of these Pokemon. We don't get it again. So, you know, out of three, you should get it. Thirty percent chance to burn. Not guaranteed, of course, but you should be able to get it. Um, now, Zassian. Do we want you paralyzed? I don't think so. I think we need Zassian kind of fighting fit for, for later in this game. The other option here is, do we start going after the Grimmsnarl? I don't think we change our minds right now, but from the, the, the get-go, if we'd start scalding there, it might have been an option. You know, um, I'm hoping that we're going to see the Max Quake come out now from the Metagross, and that we'll pull in... Um, pull in Rilla so let's see because we are going to get paralyzed unfortunately but uh, it's better Rilla Boom getting paralyzed than um, than Zassian we're going to see a reflect okay better than that T-Wave could have got a sub up here oh Max Knuckle okay well and that's into the Toad so they are boosting their attack and they do get the critical hit. It you know, did way, way more damage than what I thought it was going to do, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but we just need this burn. We just need the burn. That's all we need. A bit of luck. Third time, we should get it, but we don't get it. Three out of three, we do not get it, which is which is super frustrating for us, uh, in all honesty. Um, We need to try and get the rain back up as well. So we've got to keep that in mind with Politoed. Like, do we get the rain back up as soon as we can? Um, I think the next turn we could potentially perish. Fake out the Metagross perish song. It would be a bad option. Because then it means my opponent has to start switching around at some point. You know, they can't really just leave things on the field. And we're going to be switching these two Pokemon out for sure anyway. Metagross just going for that Protect, which is fine. So, I feel like the Metagross against this team is, is pretty difficult. Because it makes it difficult to bring Kingdra when you've got something like... Um, when you've got Grimmsnarl sitting in front of you. Uh, but we do get the Perish Song off, which is useful. And um, like I say, we can kind of switch things around going forward. I think we U-turn out onto the Metagross. Just get to maybe U-turn out onto the Grimmsnarl as well. Could be an option. Um, we just need to get damage onto the Grimmsnarl, in all honesty. And the Grassy Terrain going to actually kind of disappear soon. So 
Or is this the right time to switch Politoed off the field? Potentially. I mean, a Grassy Glide and a Scald and a Grassy Glide and a Scald should get the Grim Snarl, you know? So I think we'll go for that this turn. Because it's not likely that Rillaboom goes down to double attacks. Well, we've said that now. Jeez. Okay, well, we're paralyzed. It's not so good. And an Ice Punch coming out. Okay. Scald. Do they have Spirit Break then? Because that would be the thing that would worry me. I can't believe we've got, like, literally no... Like, literally no... Um, no burns. Four Scalds, no burns. That's bad RNG for you right there. They may not have Spirit Break. They've got Reflect. They've probably got Light Screen. They've got Sucker Punch. And they've got T-Wave. Um... The board position that we kind of need to get is Politoed. Well, we need we need Kingdra next to Rillaboom. That's what we need. All right, I'm going to pull in Zass in there, and I'm going to pull in Kingdra here, and then we can get Politoed onto the field. Um, um, protect Kingdra. Get Rillaboom on, and then nuke the uh, the the Grim Snarl. But the thing is, like as well, you've got to think like uh, we could utilize our Perish Song turns, where my opponent either is forced to switch out on that final turn, which doesn't allow them to get the T Wave, or they stay in, and we get the Fake Out and a big attack into them. Um, but we're only going to get one opportunity to do that. It's just avoiding the thunder waves. It's such an overlooked like utility, you know, but it's such a really good utility at the same time. Okay, Papa Coco coming in, which is all right. All right, our terrain, but we are pulling the double switch. So it's likely we only take maybe an ice punch into Zassi in here, which is actually not too bad. And it does give us the opportunity to um, avoid any thunder wave kind of shenanigans as well, because I think we pull Zassi in out the next turn. Um, Get Polytoed onto the field, Max Geyser into the call call. Yeah, bullet punch. I mean, we take that pretty comfortably. Metagross has to switch out this next turn as well, which is the big thing. So, get Poly onto the field, and we'll go for a Max Geyser into call call. And we'll see if we can start kind of cutting through my opponent's team now, because that's the big thing. I'd imagine Grim Snarl to come back onto the field where the Metagross is. We could have potentially stayed in like we are now. Uh, and went for Behemoth Blade into into that Metagross slot because they've got to switch it out. I don't see them sticking in yet. They're not going to stick around with it. it doesn't make sense. Grimmsnarl going to come back in, yeah. So it means we're probably going to have to huh, protect one turn if we want to avoid the um, the the thunder wave oh, it's really annoying Grimstar is just one of those Pokemon it's like you need like double fake out support to get around it but then it complicates things with needing the rain up and stuff like that it's uh, it's tricky well we've got the rain up now we've got the max guys are coming out into the Coco let's just take it down yep like I say, this next turn's work gets a bit tricky because I mean they don't if they don't have spirit break, we could just suck up the fact that um they're gonna T wave us and just ignore that anyway and just help in hand attack into Grimmsnarl to remove it from the field and take the T wave. It's just risky because hmm, yeah, I think we we need Rillaboom as well. We need Rillaboom. So we might be better just doing this because then we've got Metagross to come in in the back. Kingdra should still outspeed the majority of stuff. Yeah, let's go. Guys are into Grim Snarl. It's just whether or not they got. Oh, we don't get the helping hand boost. We really needed the helping hand boost there. The paralysis really biting us. Which is not good because there's the T wave coming out. Which is not ideal. Just going to hope that the, the geyser is enough to pick up the Grim Snarl without the helping hand boost. You've got to hope it is. <sighs> it's not. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's so frustrating. Ah. <laughs> oh. 
really is frustrating really frustrating um mm, 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 mm. okay let's try and get a perish song up if we can and let's go for a max airstream into grimstall at least then as long as the rain's on the field we'll get the jump on the kyogre which is always going to be useful get the jump on the metagross as well just to ensure that um ah we just got that helping hand boost this is where the, the t wave paralysis comes in it's super frustrating and it's something that you just don't see many players really taking advantage of i know there's a lot in the format that you can't um thunder wave because of obviously resistances lightning rod and other things but i mean one of the key things we you you think about uh your opponent really utilizing um is the fact that uh that they've got the speed advantage most of the time you know max airstream is one of the most kind of dominant uh, max moves because of the advantage it gives you over your opponent so t wave being such a free move to just throw out and be so disruptive if was as we've seen in this match it's um makes it difficult doesn't it to really kind of uh, get the most out of your team when you've got that kind of thorn stopping you most of the time um so metagross gonna come in i think rillaboom coming in now grassy glide they've got zassian to kind of fall back on just need to remove the uh the metagross from the field that's the big thing for us so if we can hit a grassy glide into the kyogre it pretty much takes it out of the game really you know um a hydro pump gonna be enough to take down the metagross as well so that's fine they do a bullet punch of course but i don't know if a bullet punch is going to be enough to get the rillaboom from from the range that we're in and we also have fake out as well so that's something else that we've got bullet punch might be enough you know bullet punch might be enough to get to get it we'll go for a grassy glide and we could double up into the metagross and hope that the kyoga protects because then huh no no i don't think so I don't think bullet punch is gonna get us. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a whim and say bullet punch is not gonna be enough. Metagross protecting. Okay. Does Kyogre protect as well just to stall out the fake out? No. They don't. Okay. Not the best idea. Uh, because now that just locks it up for us. I think when you've got access to bullet punch, you've gotta go for it there. You've gotta go for it there, even if the fake out comes out, because it's if we don't if we don't go for grassy glen fake out, it means your Kyogre's safe. Um but if we click the grassy glide button, you've got to go for the bullet punch and hope that it's enough to take us up from this range. Like I say, I think we might have just hung on, but who knows? Uh, the Metagross might have had enough uh, to do it. We'll go for a knockoff, because I think we're fine now with uh, the fact that King just faster than it. we got Zassian in the back to come in as well and kind of just finish off things if we needed to um, and pick up the knockout with the Hydra Pump. So there we go. Kingdra putting in some work in both games today. We've not really seen too much of the Zacian, but it's always there to be a Pokemon uh, to come in and help sweep up if we need it to. A uh, very good game to my opponent. We've had two good games and uh, we'll hop over now just to remind you all of that rental code for today's team. And uh, again, a big shout out to uh, Apuna Kapona. That, I think that's the username. So we'll be right back with the rental code. Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. Like I said, it is going to be a rental from another player that we're using today, but it's been a very exciting team to kind of feature. I'm a little bit sad we didn't get to see the mind shell, but we got to see the rest of the team a lot. Um, and obviously the ally switch there we didn't get to use, which is always very sad. But if you do try this team out, definitely have a lot of fun with it. I think it's a nice concept to, to take on the ladder and try out. I think it's a really strong build. And again, big shout out to... Um, uh, Apuna Kapuna. Apuna Kapuna. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. But uh, anyway, their links, their social handles are down in the description if you want to check them out and um, have fun with the team. We'll be back later in the week. But just to reiterate, if you've got rental teams you'd like to feature, see featured on the channel, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, send your rental codes over and I will feature them as we go through the next couple of weeks. We're going to be jumping back onto Twitch and streaming over on YouTube. So uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll be streaming over on Twitch tomorrow night, which will be a lot of fun. So come and join us and we'll be streaming later in the week here on youtube so keep an eye out for that friends have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to and uh, thank you so much for tuning in as always hope you've enjoyed today's episode until next time see you later bye bye